Hello and welcome to the letters page. Also welcome to Gen Con. Yeah! I'm Paul. And I'm Christopher. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing pretty well. Yeah? I'm, I'm trying to remember how the script of these go. There's no script. There's I know. no script. We're just, I'm, I'm remembering yeah. the flow. Yeah. From uh, the letters page slogan, everyone knows, no rules, just right. Classic letters page slogan. Um, yeah, yeah. We can use that, right? That's okay. Yeah. But, I don't know what that's really uh, Hi, from. everybody. Welcome to uh, Saturday yes. afternoon. Yeah, I'm getting some. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. After, yeah. Saturday midday. Midday's safer. Safer. It's afternoon, yeah, right? I think so. But noon was. Noon happened already. Noon was an hour and five minutes ago, I think. Oh. But it's Gen Con, so really hard to tell. Time dilation, you know, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, welcome. This is our fourth annual Gen Con Live podcast episode. That sounds very plausible to me. Because we did one in 2017, 2018, 2019. Something happens, and now it's 2022. So it was I, like the time jump in uh, Parks and Recreation. I really expected you to make a Star Trek episode reference. But That's you didn't true. do that thing. I didn't do that. You didn't do that thing. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Uh, yeah, welcome. Greetings. Hello, everybody. It's so thrilling to have you all here. I see a couple of Sentinel Comics costumes, people that were in the costume contest. Thank you so much. That is awesome. I love to see it. Always makes me happy. There's a Mr. Chomps here in the front row. Oh, good. I love a Mr. Chomps. Uh, so nice. So nice. Paul, have you had a good show so far? Yes, it's been very exhausting. Well, too bad. Good okay. times are over. It's time for work, and that work is a letters page podcast. This oh, is no. serious business. We're here to do serious, important things. I've got two different segments that we're going to do today. Uh, here on the letters page podcast, I don't know if you know, we take questions from the audience, and then we answer those questions. Okay. I'm sorry, you were of this? Interesting. Okay, okay. All no, right. no, I'm, I'm thinking through it. Okay, that's fine. I'm learning about it. So I've got two, different, a long time. I got two different segments. Uh, one I would call, uh, let's, call let's call this one uh, g- Get It. I, I, didn't, didn't, I did not plan this part. I call this the, the section the Get It section, and then this is the Show section. Which one do you want? Which one? Oh, We're yeah, We're going to do okay, both. Okay, I like Spoilers. it. I like it. We're going to do both. Let's do the Get It section first. Trevor, are you cool with Get It first? Or you want to do Show first? What's good for you? You have more sway here than I do. <clears throat> Are we doing a question section? Well, yeah, well we're, we're I mean, they're gonna, all questions. So do we need to transition? From? Right, right. So the, the trick is, I would say that the get it section is the question section. Okay. Then, then okay. the show section is still a question section, but like a more different one. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? You remember our extensive project management meetings we've had weekly for the last yeah, I don't know if I made nine months this, yeah. about this? Yeah. Okay. We are doing of. this live. This is a live <laughs> show. You've got to do it live. Uh, just, just either, either way. You want to do questions first? Yeah, why don't we just do questions and let's, get, let's just do get started with some questions. The question section. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Okay. So now it's time for a thing we like to call the questions section. It puts the letters in letters page. And usually Christopher and Adam they read and they answer questions from Sentinel Comics. But not this time. No. Apparently we're doing things a little bit different today. Uh we're down one of our regular co-hosts. Hold on. I thought I was here to sing the Christopher and Adam song. No, that won't work. Uh, we'll have to come up with a completely different song, I think. That sounds like a lot of effort. Maybe Adam will join us in spirit? Maybe. But that still leaves us with one problem. Who will answer questions with Christopher? Christopher and Paul Reading letters to you Christopher and Paul. Christopher and Paul. Christopher and Paul. They're doing, doing their best for you. Cause Adam's not here at all. But maybe he's haunting the hall. Christopher and Paul. They're doing their best with questions vexing Paul. Christopher and Paul Answering questions from you I hope they get to them all I hope they answer them too Christopher and Paul Christopher and Paul Christopher and
<laughs> I like I like the wind chimes at the end. It's so yeah, we're going for something very like in that the mood. Yeah. So Trevor over there, many of you know, uh, Trevor's the one that makes this show happen at all. And next to Trevor, we have the lovely and talented Jenny, uh, who has sung on stuff before for us, uh, but never live and in person like this. Right. Now we uh, thought we'd do like a, a version of the. The song yeah, that we did. Yeah, because right? you had you had a different Christopher Paul song. We did. When Adam had to do art, do art, do art, do art, do art. Do art. Right. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, great. Oh my gosh, that was fantastic. I never, I, I not, I, I had not heard that. I had been told a thing like this was happening. I was like, yeah, okay. Mm, that, there we are. Surpassed expectations. He wrote oh. it on Wednesday, so we got. It. <laughs> we were just like, no. let's get that's in great. and do it. The Trevor method. That's that's way in advance. Yeah, it's that's true. Good. That's yeah, true. It was a couple days. It was great. <laughs> Uh, okay, great. So we're in the question section now. That was fantastic. We're officially there. Hello, everybody. It's the question section, and we definitely want to take questions from you. But first, first, I need your help. Uh, re- re- real quick, real quick poll. Do any of you, have any of you come with questions with an, an intent to ask questions? Some people, some people, some people. Okay, good, good, good. Great. So we'll get to that. There was going to be space for that. But I printed out some questions in advance because I'm going to read these questions because I want to. But more importantly, Paul is going to answer these questions. And this is different. We once did a publisher's note that was an unofficial publisher's note that was just actually tacked onto the end of a uh, live stream we were doing in which I asked questions from the chat and Paul answered them and whatever he said was canon and we went with that. That was a fun time. This is different. This is where I read a question that's been sent in in advance. And these are all fairly short questions intentionally. And Paul has to get it right. He has to answer the question correctly. And if he can't, that's fine. You all are going to help him. Because these questions are very inside baseball. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to read a letter and we're going to talk through how much of this question Paul is able to understand. <laughs> now, Paul, you would say you have a passing knowledge of Sentinel Comics. Yes, I would say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, yeah. you have been around from the beginning. Right. But not as uh, involved either in the creating or, or of, or neither, neither the creating nor the... Uh, uh, absorbing right, of the information. Uh, I would have... say that I know a reasonable amount of the 2011 through 2013 lore. Oh, back in the time when the lore was not as solidified as right. it was. Yeah, good. And I would say well, that I've a lot of seen stuff. a lot of post-it notes. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that is true. The other thing like, that's true is that, yeah, yeah, come on in. The other, the other thing that is true is that you have... You, you, have, you have, like, the sort of overarching, like, oh, I know who all the characters are, and I right, know what right, they right. do, but also... I think all is a strong word, but yeah. You know who all the main... All the, like, characters that have a deck are. Do you know... This is... I'm going off script here. Do you know who Stuntman is? Yes. Stuntman is a guy who has a deck and who does stunts. Oh, no. Stuntman was... Ambuscade. Yes, that, and good, then good, became right. a hero. Okay, co, co, co. So, so this is good. So this is and like, something, something Revacorp. And something, something Revacorp. That's true. So, <laughs> so, so this is the thing. Like you have a. This is yeah, a, this yeah, is yeah. a more than just like I've played the base game once right, right, right. sort of knowledge. And there are certain deep cut things you know, right. and even there are things you know that nobody in the letters page listenership knows. Yes. Right, true. but that's like that's just like oh m- m- maybe someday. Right. So like your knowledge of Sentinel Cops with this is very bizarre. Yes, with this section when I'm reading these questions. There's nothing you know that you can't say. Like, there's nothing cool. you need to okay. be like, oh, I need to be secret yeah, about yeah, this, yeah. for one. Yeah. For two, yeah. I'm just going to read a question, and then before we attempt to answer it, I want you, we want to talk through... Right, and I'll explain, like, what, I under, what words I understand Correct. from the question. Yes. Even if I can't answer the question. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That so we're going to see... I, like, I love yeah. it. Okay, so first question is right. from Chaos Clockwork. And this one was... Was this is the, actually this question? In fact, inspired me to make this section, and Amazing. then I went through uh, the other backlog of questions. Finally, but I'm like, oh, this question is really funny to ask Paul. Are you ready? Yeah. This question begins. Let's keep it simple. In Joe Parsons' world, do the makers of Tedidos have access to potato corn? Okay. So let's go through this. All right. Let's let me. So I assume by the last name Parsons that this person is related to legacy somehow. Okay. 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 Do you, so do I know also that Tostitos were no, Toditos. Toditos. Yes. Were a joke. Yeah. For April Fools. But sometime. Okay. 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 So so far we've got Joe Parsons is related to legacy. Yes. Yeah. Is, is a is a Paul fact. Right. Toditos were a joke for April Fools. Right. Anything else? 
I can read the question again. In Joe Parsons' world, do the makers of Tadidos have access to potato corn? I sure imagine that this is that Joe Parsons' world is like an alternate something world somehow. Oh, okay. You're, so you're going into answering stuff. I love this. Okay, right. Go ahead. So Joe Parsons' world is an alternate world somehow. Right. Okay. Because of the phrasing of the question mostly. Sure, sure. Context clues. I'm not sure. Like it would be on brand but may not exist if there's like a potato verse or a corn verse mm. where everything is potatoes or everything is corn. That's, that's, that's you know what I'm a, saying? Yeah, I, I like where this like that seems plausible, right? Sure, sure. Right? Yeah, hold on, they're not okay. helping you yet. Um, uh, don't, don't help him. You'll help him no, soon. Right, help. Okay, okay. And I think this is it. Okay. I assume that okay. from this, that the, whatever, whether toast, Toditos. Toditos. Toditos are made from something that may or may not be potato corn? It's not. It's not. Okay. 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 This is up okay. All right. So that's first, about it. I get. Okay. So first off, yeah. The, the, you, you started with two truths. Okay. Joe Parsons is related to legacy. How do we feel about that? Joe Parsons. So real quick, Joe Parsons. We're familiar with who I'm talking about for Joe Parsons. Oh, some hands, some some waves. Okay. Okay. I'm really curious, actually. Like, if you if you if you know, raise your hand. Like, I'm really curious what percentage. So Joe Parsons of is a people. A, a, there's a okay. Re, cool. There's a this recent is, disparation see, yeah. issue episode that we did nice. that introduced a character whose name is Joe Parsons. Okay, all right, nice, fascinating. Nice, nice, okay. nice. Interesting, interesting, interesting. We'll come back to that. Okay. I like so, when things are so obscure that like it's, fewer it's, than 50% of you know them. To be fair, to be fair awesome. that one's also recent. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, makes sense. Tadidos. Is Tadidos just an April Fool's joke for greater than games? No. Okay, hold on, I get I get, I get, I get the hands, I get you first. The, the radio show, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, if somebody, if, who feels qualified to come up and tell us everything about Toditos? Yes, come on up here, we got a microphone, here we go. All right, yeah. Okay, so you changed your shirt, and that's disappointing to me, but it's fine, I'll live with it. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. So, you want my name? Yeah, yeah, so, okay. I'm so Nimbus. first off, introduce yourself. I'm Nimbus, King of the Heavens, Master of the Wind and Sky. Yeah! Nimbus, that's me. Excellent. Oh. What's that? Um, so Toditos was a off-brand joke in the very first episode. Um, they... They're not allowed to say Tostitos, so they said Toditos instead. Because why? Because they're the crunchiest. That's they're the, the crunchiest. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yep. So hold on. A th a th I, I, just, I just got hit by a, a lightning bolt. That was shocking to me. Sorry. We did that in the first episode? Yes, that was episode one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have learned something new That's this day. Amazing. You have, you, when I said, who feels qualified to tell us everything about Toditos? All right. Go ahead. I'm, <laughs> I'm just listening now at this point. First episode? God, yeah. okay. Please continue. Yeah. Um, so then it kind of went through some changes throughout the time. Mm -hmm. Was in the uh, radio play as a joke. Yeah, so was, in the radio play, talk more about that. Where did Toditos come from? Because so the name Toditos they comes were, from. It was a brand, Todd Lito's Pressed Corn Snack Biscuits. Todd Lito's Pressed Corn yeah, Snack Biscuits. Yeah, he had a whole so voice. That, Adam did the voice. It was great. Right. And now that... Um, the where, where, do, where does Todd Lito and uh, thus the Tito variant, where, in, in what realm does that exist? Snacks, right? No, 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 or, sorry. In what reality does that exist? Oh, well, you've said that Legacy eats it, but also it's the metaverse. It's the metaverse. Yes. So it is a real brand in the same universe in which Sentinel Comics is a real comics company. Ah, okay, yes. that makes sense. That yes. makes sense. So Todd also, Lito is part of the metaverse. The metaverse right. where Sentinel Comics is a real company. Can we very quickly put the fun bus into reverse yeah, yeah, and yeah. tell me about, you did a radio play? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it was Trevor's greatest work. Cool. Some of great, his greatest I work. I also really like the Halloween episode where he did the haunted yeah. house. That too. Yeah, 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 that was good. That was good, yeah. Yes, uh, yes we did That's a- That's a level of awareness we, I have. We so. did an old timey, like golden age radio play with advertisements Holy cow. and yes. multiple voices and it was That great. sounds great. Adam and I voiced too many characters ourselves. It was maybe- Maybe ill-advised. It's fine. That's absolutely fantastic. I love but, it. Uh, but yeah, we had Todd Lito's press because we had to hearken back to the Tadidos joke. And so like, okay, where does Tadidos come from? It's like, oh, it was originally a company. It's like, oh, Todd Lito's pressed corn snack biscuits. Uh, they're the crunchiest. Uh, That's amazing. What was the, what was the old-timey slogan? They're we, awfully crunchy. They're awfully crunchy. That's what it was. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh, man. Nimbus is here with the answers. This yeah, is great. You. Okay. Uh, <laughs> do we feel satisfied between uh, on Tadidos? Is, is that... I don't remember enough of the joke from yeah. April Fools, but that's pretty yeah, much Yeah, the April the Fools joke was that Greater Than Games had been purchased by Toditos. Yes. And, oh, and, it was, yes. and, um, and yes. that was in that was in April first, 2019, 2018, 18 or 19. I think I it was maybe last year or the year before. It was oh, was recent. It? I think it was for the 
I think it was Definitive Edition Kickstarter update. Oh, right. yes, yeah, so it's 2020. Yeah, so it's 2020. Yeah. April 2020. It yeah. is so hard to remember which of those years are which. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Awesome. Nimbus, round of applause. Round of applause for this guy here. I did not intend this to be quite the level of Sentinels trivia, but I am. This is exciting. Yeah, I'm really here for this. That this is great. awesome. That was our first episode we made the Toditos joke. Man, what visionaries we are. No, first, <laughs> first episode is legacy, not visionary. Okay, um, but, uh, okay so uh, I, I, what I want is somebody to tell me a truth that connects to the first and third thing, but I think that you're giving the hands. So potato corn. Anybody feel qualified to talk about potato corn? Or is that a throwaway joke that only I remembered and apparently chaos clockwork? Cool. Potato corn. So, now I will tell you this. Oh, oh wait, never mind. Does somebody feel qualified to talk about Joe Parsons? Yeah. Yeah. Only kind of. Yeah, the only kind of is great because otherwise I'm doing the whole thing myself, which I'll do, but okay. Who so is Joe, Joe Parsons? Joe Parsons is the, is the legacy of of a disparation universe, this uh, Joe Parsons is African American. Well, yes. one of a, one of his predecessors was African American, and yep. And, and I think the connected tissue here is that one of Joe Parsons' ancestors was Irish. Went went over to Ireland. No, no, no. no. F- fair question. No, pota- so potato corn ended up being the th- yeah, was, oh, yeah. You know, you're right. It's not that he was Irish, but he did go over to Ireland and fought yes. the religion there. And then the, like potato corn was a crop that was used there. And so like so, like, so this is yes, so, yeah, yeah. That's 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 it. That's it. You did. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Good, excellent. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, who the heck are you? I know. Who are you? <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Lee Wolf Hunt. <laughs> Brian the Wolf Hunt. Yeah. See, I am familiar with both you and Nimbus See? from your screen names right. for the letters page. See? Yes. Like, this, those this I know. Good. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know that you're people that ask questions. <laughs> yes. Good? Yeah, I think I'm good. Good. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Brian okay. the Wolf Hunt. All right. Yes. Yeah, so Joe Parsons is America's boldest legacy. Right. Right. And Generations, generations, generations back. Right, right, different right. stories. This is a fairly recent. I think it's like a month ish ago we did this episode of the Letters Page. If you haven't listened yep. to it, go check it out. I am inordinately proud right. of it. But you know, and it, this it, is a thing that I knew about before it was live on the Letters Page because I remember talking about it in the office. Like right, because you were part of a conversation with me and Ray and Tuana right. about. All right, I'm doing Black Legacy. Let's do this right. Yeah. Um. And uh. And I, I feel like I feel like we hit it. And also. I've, I've got some very good advice from very smart people about it. Potato corn was a throwaway joke in there. And thus, this question, let's start over. Yeah. In Joe Parsons' world, yeah. do the makers of Toditos have access to potato corn? And pota- what is potato corn, though? It's, just, it's, just, a, it's just a one-off joke of a, a crop that was like, oh, they had, the way that they, they, fi- they uh, fixed the Irish independence situation oh, was by the hybrid, hybridizing the potato, 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 potato corn. corn. Oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. So presumably, yes, right? Sure. Why not? <laughs> Yeah, right. The, the thing is, the answer to this question is way less interesting than the minutiae of the question itself. <laughs> okay, awesome. Good. So I think that was a really good example. Yeah, right. yeah, I like it. Oh, would this you, is great. Would you like another? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, Corwin Texley writes, Hello, Adam and Christopher. <clears throat> you have previously said that the Oracle of Discord exists in all realms of Discord. Does this mean that the Oracle is a fixed point? Does the Oracle know this? Thanks, Corwin Texley. Paul, how many pieces Ooh, boy. of that? <laughs> so, okay, so yeah. I know that the realm of Discord is this realm sure. that's quite, is not concordant, right? If only there were a word. Uncordant? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Decordant? Decordant, yeah. Synecordant? Mmm, anticordant. I can do a bunch of Latin etymology about this. Certainly. Uh, so, the, and it's, it's an environment deck. Sure. See? I, yeah. I know there. Okay. And you go into it and things are, like stuff is going on. Yeah. I assume yeah. from the question that there are multiple realms of Discord because there's multiple universes. This is great. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, this Which is, makes yeah. perfect sense. Right? right? Just like there's multiple legacies like we just talked about. Right. And so each universe Super has logical. its own realm of Discord. Right, right. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I believe I vaguely recall a discussion about a fixed po- about fixed points Ooh, from okay. a number of years ago, right? Which is that their events where the same thing happens in every universe across the multiverse. Yes. Cool. So, 
Right. So like, a, so like v- Vanessa Long getting powers yes. is a fixed point. Right, right, right. Right. But then what happens from that fixed point differs right. across Yeah, and what the, the Vanessa, some, some Vanessa Longs are... Uh, some are the Vanessa dreamers, is, some of is, them are... Is a, is is a soldier, yeah. some of it is a little right, right. girl, some of it is a fish. Like, these are all... Right, right, right. Th- those are all expressions of Vanessa Long. They get powers. Right. Makes sense to me. Okay. Okay, so then... I cast out into the deep and don't know answers. You so, said previously that the I don't oracle? know what the oracle of discord is. Okay, just no, just hard, I just, do just not hard know. no on the oracle of discord. I mean, like, I can, like, I bet it's an oracle from the realm of discord. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you, have, you have no, you have yeah, no yeah. knowledge of this thing. Right. Okay. So, okay, great. So, then, so, so that's... So, so, yeah, yeah, I think that's right. We're, we're, at, we're at no yes, yes. In yes. terms of yes, fixed points. Right. Yes, realm of discord. Who here feels qualified to talk about the oracle of discord? Yeah, come on up. I like that competent hand raise there. Who are you? Uh, hang on, I gotta check. No, I'm James. Uh, I lurk under various screen names. I won't tell them. So there. Perfect. That's great. I love uh, it. The Oracle of Discord was introduced in an issue where Grand Lord Warlord Voss was trapped in the realm of Discord, and encountered these beings. They were like multiples, and yet they're only one. And asked uh, to see a future where, if he had, what would happen if he had one? And that started the Desperation line. Yes. And the Oracle of Discord was the framing device for the first entire run of the Disparation line until it was canceled and came back as La Camodora and Time Slinger. Oh, almost. Nice. So, yeah, uh, you're, you're, you're doing great. You're doing great. All of Volume 1 is Oracle of Discord presents these stories. Um, sometimes we see who it's presented to, sometimes not, but th- that's all correct. In the second volume, they're just like, eh, we're telling alternate reality stories. Occasionally there's Oracle of Discord things, and then about two-thirds of the way through the run of Volume 2, La Camodora comes in and takes over the book. But, so you were correct, you were just missing a midpoint at the beginning of Volume 2. I'll so, take partial credit. Yeah, 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 totally fine, totally fine, yeah. Uh, great. Do we feel satisfied in Oracle of Discord? Are we missing anything? That's awesome. Awesome, great. Yeah. Good job, James. Good job, James. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. At any point in time, if we're doing all these descriptions and somebody does it, and I'm like, okay, I think we're satisfied. Somebody's like, well, hold on. You forgot that it was introduced in episode one. Uh, like, <laughs> shout that out. But yeah, perfect. That, so, okay, so Oracle of Discord okay. are these people that when you're in the realm of Discord, if you're looking for them, you'll never find them. But if you're then there and you're like, there's something you're fundamentally missing or you need, you, can, you might stumble across the Oracle of Discord and they'll be like, great, let's show, let's show you a reality in which you get that thing you need. And oh boy, is it almost always bad. Is it almost always like, oh, I got the thing, I, this is terrible. Um, this is the moment when we played a game of Inheritance Luke Crane and he was Daxo and he came in and he's like, I'm going to get everything yes. I wanted. And at the end of it, he's like, no, I, sure, I did. I got everything I wanted and nothing else. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah nice, yeah, I love yeah. it. That was a deep cut. That was just for me and Paul. Um, Adam and I do this all the time on the podcast. I will also do this with Paul. Sometimes Trevor cuts those things out. <laughs> can't cut this one out. You can't stop us. He can, actually. That's also, <laughs> You just cut these microphones. Anyway, okay, so... Great. So I think you actually have all the things you need now. Okay, so ask the question again. Yeah, yeah. So y- you said previously that the Oracle of Discord yeah. exists in all realms of Discord. Right. Every realm of Discord has an Oracle of Discord. Right. Does this mean that the Oracle existing is a fixed point? So yes, right? Yes. Okay. And the next question, does the Oracle know that it's a fixed point? Yes. This is, this is the correct answer. Okay. I, I would phrase that more wordily yeah. as yes, but it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, they right, know they're okay. a fixed point, but... Right, right, eh? right. Right? Right. But yes. Nice. Yeah. You did it. Nice. You did it. Thanks, everyone. All right, I have three more of these. I'm going to do one more, so we've done three, and then we'll see if we're liking this or if we want to go on to something else, but like, just kind of playing it fast and loose here. I just, I think this is really funny to me. Um, <laughs> recycled comedy writes in a letter saying, Greetings all. <clears throat> in editor's note number 57, you talked about a hypothetical robotic slash Omnitron offspring of legacy and their ability to create further children that would also be eligible to receive powers. Is there a time lock on the powers coming to fruition in line with human reproduction and maturity? Or could this robotic line of offspring accelerate the process and add further new powers at a faster rate? If they could, does this eventually reach a point where there are no useful powers left to acquire? Or does Wellspring cut them, up, uh, cut them off at some point? Or a different conclusion. Cheers. Okay. Whew. I know who Legacy is. Good, 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 good. good, good. good, good, good. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this into chunks and ask yeah, you, yeah. like, why slash in on these chunks? Right. Editor's note number fifty-seven. I couldn't. No, I no, 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 no. 
You know what an editor's note is. Yes, I believe that editor's note 57 exists. That sounds like a plausible number to have gotten to. And you know what type of episode an editor's note is. Yeah, yeah, it's where you create a new thing. No. no. It's where you explain an existing thing. Mm. It's where you don't explain a non-existent thing. <laughs> <laughs> So we have creative processes and writers' rooms. Writers' room, we create up a thing, we make up a oh, thing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Creative That's processes, fun. we like delve further into a thing, and so but, but like writers' rooms are like, ah, oh, we tell an issue, we tell a specific issue. Oh. So writers' rooms like yeah, yeah. single comic book issue, nice, sometimes nice. more than one issue, but like we tell a story. Creative processes are like, let's talk about villains for this one particular hero, or let's talk about times that a thing like this happened. So, nice. so like, okay, like, okay, yeah, yeah. Editors' notes are the once a month shows that we do live for Discord for the for the uh, Patreon supporters that those get made as uh, and those. Those are just questions all the way down. So our publisher's notes are much like editor's notes. Sure. Okay. Yes. Very, very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just I was just curious. I'm like, I bet you Paul's not exactly certain what editor's notes. No, I wasn't. And I, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Great. In editor's notes, you talked about a hypothetical robotic Omnitron offspring of legacy. I mean, in isolation, yeah. I know what all those words mean. Okay. <laughs> There's only one that, you, that is specific to Sentinel Comics that you haven't yet defined on the stage. Okay. Hypothetical. That's not it. Oh, okay. <laughs> More specific to Sentinel Comics. Robotic? The next word after that. Offspring. Omnitron. Between robotic and offspring, the word omnitron? Oh, okay. I know what, who omnitron is. There we go. That's all I needed. That's good. Okay, That's yeah, yeah. Okay, like, Omnitron's yeah. a robot or a factory or a factory robot. Yeah, yeah, good. That's it. Yeah. How, how many how many versions of Omnitron are there? Uh, five. No. <laughs> Two, <laughs> Twenty-seven. Hold on. You know that there's a hero deck named Omnitron. Okay, ten. There's got to be ten. Right. So yeah. That's true. The answer is actually way more than ten because. Right. But I know that it has to be ten. Yeah. You know it. You you know Omnitron X yes. exists, and that's you know true. that X stands for for a ten. Right. At least ten. Do you right. like Omnitron C or Omnitron M? See, that's the thing. No. Hmm? Interesting, right? Okay. Uh, hypothetical robotic Omnitron and their ability to create future children that would be eligible to receive powers. Okay, now we're getting into the weeds. Right. And there's a mention of Wellspring, which I've never heard before, but I assume is the source of the legacy powers or something. There we go. Based on this the is construction great. of the question. This is great. Question. You have gotten us exactly to the point where I say, all right, Paul, can you explain legacy, uh, Wellspring? And the answer is no. Definitely I can, I can, you can conjecture. Right, exactly. Can explain. Right. Somebody feel confident to talk about Wellspring? Oh, yeah. Come on up. Come on up. Yes. I like, oh my goodness. I like that so far. Every, uh, every question has had a different person who's like, oh, this one's me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brett. Greetings. Um, Thank you for being here. <laughs> Wellspring is the singular entity that is the source of the Parsons line powers, and it is an entity of progress. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Just boom. That was so clean. That was, yes. 100%. No notes. Thank you so much. That was great. <laughs> that was perfect. And singular entities yes. are entities that exist w once across the multiverse or something? Brett, come on back. We need your help. Come back. You're going to help us out here. Sorry. I, Paul, I, I can answer these questions, but I like it more if you do it. Yes. And generally speaking, they take on some sort of aspect as part of their prime entity-ness. Oh, okay. Because like Oblivion is one of these, right? Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hand wavy people. Um, so now I know two. No, no, no. no. There, there's another singular entity that you definitely know of. Really? Wager Master. Oh. Who is a singular entity of? Chaos? Yes, yes, right, obviously. Okay. Are you, are you feeling good on singular entities? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we can release you back into the wild. Cool. Thank you. That was great. Man, that was so clean. That was so crisp. It was just like this, this, that. Oh, I love it. Okay. So, yes, singular entities, aspects, everything. She said, oh. Perfect. Great. Uh, no, no. So, yeah. So, so, Wellspring being a singular entity of progress is a much later addition for the new comics of going, okay, but hold on. Where does the legacy line come from? Why do these people get these powers? Also, why does the firstborn get it and none of the other borns? Right, like, what's right, going right. on here? This feels like magic. Like, we say that the legacy power set is genetic, but why? Right. Like, what is the thing that caused this? And there was a, a later... Um, Thing in Sentinel Comics that is canon, and that some Sentinel Comics readers are like, I don't like this Sentinel Comics, I don't like this Wellspring thing, but too bad, it's the way it works. Uh, where uh, some writers decided we're gonna do this thing. Here's this singular entity of progress for a way long time ago, like, booped, and just set this in motion, and it walked away. Like, it's not, like, Wager Master is a very active singular entity. Most singular entities are like, no, I just kinda hang back. So, Wellspring 
is the midichlorians of the yeah. Sentinel comet. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh, no one has ever made that reference. That is hilarious to me. Yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah. the, the fan divide on right, Wellspring exactly. is absolutely the midichlorians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I love it. Right. So yeah, so Wellspring is, is retconned as being the source of the Parsons line of power. But this also gives us the ability to do a lot of fun things with other Parsons and, other, and with other legacies and other realities because it's like, oh, Wellspring is the source of all legacy powers. So whatever Wellspring has set in motion is about progress. And progress in of itself is not positive or negative. It's just progress. What does that mean? Well, Wellspring has set in this reality a legacy line that has given us this kind of progress. But in others, in the Joe Parsons line, it's a different thing. So, okay. Interesting, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 right. Uh, okay, so then does that give you the information you need? I mean, like, I'm kind of confused about the Omnitron legacy robotic hybrids. Okay, so now we're getting into pure hypotheticals that are fan theories that are still interesting to talk about, which there are a few of. There's a lot of like, fan theory, maybe this is that. Okay, great, maybe, maybe, like that's fine. This one's an interesting fan theory because it is not about something that is, ha that is happening, but something that could happen, which is legacies. Well, hold on, before I explain this to Paul, does somebody else want to explain legacy power progression? No, me? Me. Okay. Uh, so, le so legacy's firstborn child. The, the firstborn right. child of legacy gets yeah. powers. Yeah, yeah. What does firstborn child mean? Right. Like, what if legacy has twins? Great. What if legacy adopts? Mm -hmm. And guess what? Canonically, mm -hmm. would have powers. Aha. Okay, cool. cool okay. Cool. So, once we've unlocked that, this, nice. the, 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 the first, we say, I say firstborn, but obviously the word born is right. out there. It is the first child of legacy gets the legacy powers. Right. So, now what if you have a legacy Omnitron right. hybrid. Okay, so you take some reality in which something weird happens and legacy and Omnitron become the same entity. Now Omnitron is able to quickly iterate its own offspring. Right. Omnitron I mean, all one, it would two, take three, four, would five, be six, seven, eight, nine. legacy adopting Omnitron. Sure, yeah. If there's, right. right. So like, let's say the um, RPG era Felicia Parsons, who right. is legacy, decides that the latest iteration of Omnitron is her child. Right. Okay, great. Then to, if that Omnitron iterates on itself, right. does it get the power upgrades that legacies get every right. time? Yes. Yes. That's my answer. Does any... This is the thing. Right. This is what I would say. It's, it depends on if that sentient Omnitron entity consider, considers itself to be a parent. Right? So if Omnitron considers itself to be a parent, then it would get the powers. If it does not, then it wouldn't. Two things. Yeah. A, I agree. Awesome. Because it, the, the adoption thing unlocks this. Right, correct. Adoption says, oh, if right. Legacy adopts someone and says, this is my child, and thus they get powers, right. then that means if Omnitron's like, oh, I'm just iterating on myself. These are just future versions of myself or duplicates or iterations. Or right. Not. Fine. But if these are, oh, no, this is my child. Right. Powers. Correct. Okay. What is, and this one, I expect someone in the audience to know, what is the actual answer for whether or not an offspring of legacy would get powers? What is the thing that at the end of the day, in a meta sense, determines whether or not this story gets told? Uh, if that, no? Eh? Okay. The answer is, and I'm going to say it in yours, like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Whatever the writers felt like doing. Right. <laughs> Right. But like, this is the thing. What, are, are the writers interested in telling a story that's like, oh, we're going to do this with iterating and having powers, or they're like, oh, Legacy adopts an Omnitron, and that's, that's, like, that's where that story ends. So that is, at the end of the day, what, what, the, what, what the answer is. But it has to be internally consistent. If right. the writers are like, oh, Legacy is going to have children, and then it's not the first child, but it's the second child that gets powers. People are like, wait a minute, hold on. That's not internally consistent. So you can create a situation that breaks it and that makes people mad. You have to do something that works within the system that established and, and then extends it somehow in an internally consistent way. And internally consistent yeah. and interesting. Right. Like, what are the, writer, are the writers doing something with it? Anyway, okay, cool. That was a good one. That was a good one. All right. Uh, great job, everybody. Yeah, I'm going I'm to do these two more. I'm going to do these two more because I, I pulled them for ball. Okay, two more of these, and then we'll move on to the other section. Ah, we're only 40 minutes in. This is great. Is it a four-hour panel? Four-hour recording? Four hour? I, think it, I think it's six. Five. Five. Thank you. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I messed up. Okay. Uh, Sky Whale, six, oh my gosh, uh, six, I see six in the back, I got six, I know I got six, I know I got six going one, oh, seven, seven right here, seven right here, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Sky Whale writes, hey, CNA, uh, 
Is the man in the red suit from the Rook City Renegades rulebook Soothsayer Carmichael? Thanks, Sky Whale. All right. I know what Rook City is. I know what a rule book is. Do you know what Rook City Renegades is? Yes. So, but it's, it's the Rook City Renegades rule book you're talking about. Right, Rook City Renegades mm. rule book. I have not seen the Rook City Renegades rule book. That's fine. I have seen a red suit. Do you know what a man is? Yes. <laughs> and typically when I see a man wearing a red suit, it's someone being inducted into the Cardinals Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You got it. But I assume that's not what's going on here. All right. Does anybody feel qualified? Has anybody seen the man in the red suit in the Rook City? Ren okay. Okay. Nobody else? So the Rook City Renegades rulebook we put out as in a Kickstarter update for the Rook City Renegades Kickstarter. We put a, a PDF of the rulebook and immediately, we knew this was going to happen, we're flooded with the question of, but who's that guy? <laughs> There's an art on one of the pages that shows some guy in a red suit outfit uh, who's clearly like in some weird place. He's in the realm of Discord. Spoilers, not spoilers. Um, and, but it's like, but who is this man in this red suit? A question which I'm not going to answer today. <laughs> I did know that you put out that PDF in a Kickstarter update. Great. I was aware of that. I just now, didn't look we've at been it. dancing around something here. Yeah. The thing you think you would be dancing around is a man in a red suit, but no, it's not. Well, do you happen to remember the last two words of that question? Sentence? I don't, because I didn't understand them. That's great. Is the man in the red suit from the Rook City Renegades rule book? Soothsayer Carmichael. Have you heard these words before? Who wants to no. talk about Soothsayer Carmichael? Surely somebody. Uh, we haven't heard from Baron Blade in the back here. <laughs> Hello. 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 Who are you? Uh, I go by the Pain Train on the Discord. Yeah. Yeah. And so Soothsayer Carmichael was a character created as a supporting cast for the Argent Adept, who okay. is a master who has a fantastic understanding of magic. Yes. He's very scholarly in magic. No ability to do magic whatsoever. Yes. Much it's, to his great chagrin. <laughs> yes. Soothsayer Carmichael is one of the saltiest characters in Sentinels of Multiverse. <laughs> he knows everything there is to know about magic. He has studied asterisk. He thinks he knows everything there is to know about magic. Uh, uh, he has studied all all magic. He is a master of magic Asterisk. that cannot do magic at all. So he spends a lot of his time telling specifically Arjun Adip, but also Nightmiss and other people who do magic, that they're doing it wrong. You can't just, you can't, what, you, you, you can't put this rune in that circle because it's not, like, I don't care that it works. It's bad. It, oh, he's, he's, he's great. I love Susair Carmichael. That's awesome. Uh, does anybody have anything on Susair Carmichael that they want to add to this description? Are we satisfied? I'm feeling pretty satisfied. Yeah. Okay, awesome, great, thank, thank you, you, good job. Thank you, the pain train. All right. Is the man in the red suit from the Rook City Rulebook Susie or Carmichael? No. Correct. <laughs> Which is the exact, if we'd read that on the regular letters page episode and Adam and I were reading it, we would have read the question and said the word no and moved on, but this was more fun for me, personally. <laughs> Last question. Yeah. Hey everyone, given that the Lord of the Rings will be back in a big way this year, I have a question. What happened to the seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone? Thank you. No Prion. Prion wrote this letter, by the way. So, Paul. Yes. Do you understand all the constituent parts of this letter? I do. Fascinating. Would you like to explain them? Absolutely. Thank you. Do you need so, to reference the letter? You got it. No, I got it. That's what I thought. So, uh, the set. Do, who knows what the seven is? Yeah, that's right. Paul, take the brains. Anyone know? The seven? All right. In the Lord of the Rings, who's familiar with the Lord of the Rings story? Seen like the movie at least? So you know the poem that goes, uh, three rings for the elven kings under the sky, seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone? So there were seven rings that were made by Calembrum Bor and Sauron in his guise of Anatar, the, the bringer of gifts, I'm pause when you they didn't know who Sauron was. Paul had no idea I was going to ask this question. Please continue. Yeah. Uh, and they, the, the set of seven rings was given to seven dwarven lords, right? And one of them actually was the ancestor, was Thror, 
uh, who is, who wound up with Thor, who is Thorin from The Hobbit, Thorin's grandfather, had a ring, right? So then that ring, this is an example, this is the thing we know the most about and the other ones we can explain. So the ring, the ring of Thor um, was passed on to, so Thor went into the mines of Moria to look upon them again and then was killed. But before he did, he gave his ring to his son Thrain, right? His son Thrain was found by Gandalf in the dungeons of the necromancer in, in Dol Guldur before he moved back to Mordor. Uh, and that is where Gandalf got from Thrain the map and the key for uh, the Lonely Mountain Erebor that then sets off the quest in The Hobbit. But Thrain did not have the ring at the time, and Thrain did not give the ring to his son Thorin before he went on his journey back to Erebor that wound up with him getting captured by the Necromancer. And so at that point, the Necromancer, who is Sauron, gets that ring back. And that is the last of the seven rings that is recovered by Sauron. Uh, and Sauron had recovered two of the other seven rings. The other four, if memory serves, were consumed by dragons because the dwarves that had them got eaten by dragons. So that's the answer. Uh, Follow-up question real quick. Yeah. When a dwarf wearing a ring is eaten by a dragon, yes. is, the dragon, is the ring consumed by the... Internal? Yes, so the that ring, is the, that is the implication. Just, they're not just... Right, right. They're not like hanging out in a dragon? Right, because if you remember in the second chapter of The Lord of the Rings, Shadow of the Past... Gandalf tells Frodo that uh, it was said of old that the, the dragon fire could destroy a ring of power, right? Yeah. That is sort of like a, a known issue of lore. He then goes on to mention that the one ring could almost certainly not be destroyed by any, the fire of any dragon, not even Ankelgon the Black. Mm, classic. Yeah. Who was famously killed by Iarendil in the War of Wrath. Uh, does everybody feel that was a sufficient answer? Does anybody have any additional notes? I will just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think we're. I think we're. I think we've, we've sufficiently answered that question. Then. Thank good, you. Good. <laughs> it is funny to me how much somebody who like would know nothing about Tolkien or nothing about Sentinel Comics the last. 45 minutes would be like, I don't know. <laughs> Just a bunch of nonsense words. <laughs> okay, great. We have another segment, but before we go on to that segment, some people had some questions, and I want those questions. And this way, we've established now, if you're asking a question, and Paul doesn't know what it's about, we've got a system for figuring it out. So, if you've got questions, line up. We'll do a section of questions, and after that, we'll get on to the show part. Nice. After that. Who's up first for questions? Come on. Not everybody all at once, but which I mean, come on, everybody all at once. Anybody? Yeah, come on. Start us off. Hi. Hi, who are you? I'm David Rogers. Excellent. Um, it's actually kind of fortuitous this is, that Paul's here because this is almost a better question for Paul. Uh, I want to explore a trope called real life writes the plot okay. for the metaverse okay. and for reality. So if there's anything that has either occurred or hasn't occurred because the universe screws you sometimes, and you've talked about this a couple times, but like, there's space to explore. Yeah. Uh, that's a statement that should be interpreted as a question. <laughs> okay. So your question is, how, do you, how would a publishing company, be it a, either a fictional one like Sentinel Comics or a real one like Greater Than Games, um, publish a story about something that has happened to someone in real life? Uh, no. Okay. Th this is about, like, uh, the, the um, tsunami is a good example of this. Where, okay. like, you oh, want to ship oh, a thing, oh, 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 oh. real life gets in the way, screw you. Deal with it. Right. So, like, when we had the tsunami that set back our cargo containers, um, we, as a result, put the card tsunami in the uh, time cataclysm deck. Or, more accurately, the product didn't ship as soon as you wanted to because... Right. Real life wrecks the plot sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm not certain what the question is. Uh, the I, question I understand is the question. It does like, happen sometimes. Yes, yeah. it does happen sometimes. Yeah. So, if there's any... Um, this is like decisions that were made by the writers because oh, they had sure, to. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. products and Sentinels wanted to ship because, and then it's like, well, you know, the Kickstarter failed and that's not out. Or you're like, hey, we can actually make this happen because situations oh, have changed. Oh, interesting. I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so what like, are examples of this so like besides in, Tsunami in, in, the aughts, in real life? Or, like in yeah. the aughts in Sentinel Comics, there's a, there's a comic book uh, that is a team-up between Legacy and Obama. 
<laughs> nice. for instance. Yes, like this is exactly the kind right. of thing. Right. So yeah, there are there are certainly cameras. There's one there's a golden age one in the fifties where there was like various like uh um African American uh, boxers who ended up in stories in the early golden age Sentinel Comics stuff that were reacting to that. Um yeah, there's like so like the world of Sentinel Comics, the metaverse, uh the world in which Sentinel Comics is a publishing company, is presumed to be incredibly similar to ours, but with a few notable differences. The biggest difference being the, that Marvel and DC don't exist and that Sentinel Comics does exist. And the history of Sentinel Comics book gets into who are their uh, contemporaries and competitors. Great. Yeah. Um, but so things that happen in the world, like the, the creation of the Wagner Mars base um, in, the, in the pages of Sentinel Comics was a reaction to the space race and to um, the like people, various people racing to get to the moon and um, it's like, okay, but we, we're going to go beyond that. We're going to go to Mars and we're going to do these other things. And so like that, that was like m many things. Uh, I would say a majority of things happening in comics are in some way reactions to things happening in the world. Um, your question is also about things that it's happened. Very broad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. So, things that also happened in the world of greater than games that were reactions to happen right. to things in the world. The clearest thing that I can think of is a pretty recent thing, which is the the upcoming product, Horizons of Spirit Island, which came out of if, if you haven't heard of it, there's a Horizons of Spirit Island is an upcoming Spirit Island product, obviously, that is a uh, beginner introductory game to Spirit Island. A pre expansion. A pre expansion <laughs> to Spirit Island. Yeah, that's a good word. I hate that word. Oh, I like it. Um, and it is going to be at first exclusive to Target and then the retailer Target. And then after that, it will go to everything. Anyway. So yep. the, the real world events that conspired to make that happen is not only Target wanting to get it, um, wanting a product kind of like that, but also the combination of a shipping container costs getting really, really high and weird. So it was changes the calculus of like, uh, what volume of things you can bring across in complicated ways. And then also us switching around some manufacturers and actually finding manufacturers that could do different things at different prices that actually made that work. Um, we're very inside the weeds reasons. So that's the best. Yeah, example. that's exactly yeah, the yeah. kind of thing I wanted to yeah. hear about. Great. Cool. Thank awesome. You. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Next question. James again. Hey James. I'm back. Uh, I'm glad that it's both Christopher and Paul. So, it's been a while since the sale to Flat River. How do you feel like, what are your favorite parts from both a logistic side and a creative side <laughs> with this change? Yeah, absolutely. So I can definitely talk about like the logistic side of it. It's that the, uh, the complexities of like, are we talking about like, like shipping being very expensive? Whatever comes to mind. Right, and bringing stuff over. Well, exactly that, right? So that we, we're able to now print stuff and keep stuff in stock a lot more easily. And we're also able to more, more frequently put in orders. So right now, we're, I'm working with an assistant to plan out, like, these are all of our print runs for the next two years, basically. And this is when they will go in. This is roughly how much they will cost. And having the logistical assistance and framework in which to do that is awesome. Additionally, something that is true about both the logistics side and the creative side is that we've hired a lot more people. Yeah. More people than we could have hired without the Flat River Group involvement. Like by a uh, lot. We've hired eight people this year? No, we've hired at least 12. This year? Yeah. Fantastic. A lot of that is warehouse, but... Oh yeah 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 um and um and as part of that too um Matt Kroll who used to be in our warehouse primarily is now almost entirely in the office full time and is part of the game design and development team um which is uh myself Matt Kroll uh Chris Burton and Daryl Lauder and that having a team now doing what I was essentially doing by myself for the first at least six years. When did, when did yeah. we hire Chris Burton? Chris Burton was the first person we added yeah. to the design team, but even still. So yeah, so like the design team has been for the longest time just me, um, and now is also Chris Burton, who's been helping with Sentinels things, but also other things. But now with Daryl and Matt also part of the team, we're able to do a lot more different stuff, and so that's that's been a, that creatively has been helpful. The other thing is that the goal, and we've been working towards this goal, and it's been at least semi-successful, is uh, to have the um, 
my time be a significantly higher percentage of my time being creative time uh, instead of logistical time or warehouse time um, or other things. And so that's been that has been a big part of it. We so. also have got a, a full time independent contractor who's helping you. That's true. We, yeah, we also added Nick, Nick as a full time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. So yeah, so so those are some big been a lot of build out on that side. Yeah. And also for me, like I've got a lot less time to worry about like accounting yeah. and things like that. So then I can spend that those times paying attention to other things. So I'm actually now helping out with the upcoming creative project. That's that true. That's true. You're doing for the, the first time work. in quite a while. Yeah, because you right. did some early on creative right. stuff uh, in and around Sentinels and other things, Galactic Strike Force. Right. But now you and I and Bailey and an outside contractor named Ian are doing a big creative project that we'll probably put out in 2025. Uh, that is. Super fun. Yeah. So that. So yeah. So you're, even you're going to do creative work again. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Great. Hello, Nimbus again. Hey, um, Nimbus. I've got a question for Paul. Um, as a Patreon supporter, we are able to submit topics that we want you guys to talk about. Would you be willing to like join them on one of those if we were to? Submit like, hey, we want Paul to help him with a space or a Fay type mm. uh, creative process or writer's room. Would you want to help them with a writing an issue or creating a thing? Is that something Christopher would want to do? I think that would be super fun. And that way, if it was a create or a writer's room, you could actually have Bedell, Rebitaro, and Bender on the cover, and yeah. all three of you actually made the thing. Interesting. Maybe. I would do it if that's yeah. Not. Yeah. It was something we can something yeah, yeah. We explore. Yeah. 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 The, the, the trickiest part of that is just the logistics right, of exactly. taking four hours of your time yeah, on a, exactly, a Friday. But, so, yeah. yeah. And also, like, once in a while, I know when we were doing the publisher's notes, it was very fun. Right. And so people would write in it's questions that are. It's more likely that we would do another publisher's note where we do publisher's note type stuff. Uh, pulling you in on a writer's room or creative process is more challenging, right. but not impossible. But, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's a good yeah, idea. It's possible. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the pain train yes. again, and this one a little bit more directed to you, Christopher. But uh, we could also get Paul involved too, sure. uh, a little bit in the gist of what we were we were just doing. So, from what we know about Oblivion and Wager Master, if you hit them hard enough, you either get shards or goo, which can then empower people. Pause. I know most of what that means. Do you know? I know who goo? Oblivion is, and I know who Wager Master are. Do you know what the goo part? I know is? they're both singular entities. Right. I know what Oblivion shards are. Great. We don't have a train, Trevor. No, this is different. This, this is, is new. This is we've not had this before. You we can just edit singing out in post too, right? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we're now, Trevor's going to get a lot of videography XP. The good news is that, yeah, that too. But yeah. yes, the good news is that I can hear you guys pretty well. Good, good, good. We'll good. see if I can, we'll see if I can, how I can, go well I can get make, it. Make sure when you come to ask questions, you talk real into the mic. You've been doing great. Everybody's been great. Yeah. great. But uh, we're going to have to. The first half of this audio. podcast where we didn't have very loud singing blasting right to the wall. Yeah. Was much better for audio. Yeah, I think it's coming yeah. through the wall. I don't just think. record 10 seconds of room tone, which is singing. All right, great. Uh, now I feel like we should do a sing-along to compete with their sing-along. You, I mean, we're going to do the, the show section a bit. Right. You, were, uh, you were saying... Yeah, so uh, I know all those things. And wait, I but hold on. I infer from the question yeah. that Wager Master produces goo in a similar matter, manner to how Oblivion produces shards. Similar, that goo is instrumental in the creation of a character. Ooh. I got nothing. Guys... Oh, that makes sense. Guys, yep, 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 yep. in a weird way, yeah. in a non-linear way, guys is to wager master as legacy is to Wellspring. Right. Not exactly the same because it's a different method, but right, right, right. like... What does Wellspring produce if you hit Wellspring hard enough? That was actually going to be one of my questions. Oh, okay, okay, great, great, great. Nice. Great, great. Now I'm intrigued and I want to know. Um... Uh, droplets of water. A fine mist. A <laughs> fine mist. So isoflex alpha then? 
<laughs> no, that's that's fun though. I like that. Uh, no, that comes from the Nolan generator. Uh, so the, 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 Paul, the... do you know what the words isoflux alpha or Nolan generator are? No. Okay, don't worry about it. Cool, cool, cool. We'll see if it comes back up. Uh, yeah. So uh, follow up to that. Yeah. Um, although any, so we know that faultless was once a singular entity. Yes. No longer one, split across the multiverse, all of that. Right. Would it have, are there still remnants of its singleness across the multiverse or, uh, and if so, have we seen them? Okay. Okay. We know that Faultless. I've heard the name Faultless, but I don't know who Faultless is exactly. But as we've established, I know what singular entities are and I it makes sense to me that one could be like desingularized. Yeah, right. Cool. Great. So there yeah, was yeah. a singular entity whose name is lost that was a singular entity that was defeated in a way. Was their was their name lost or is their name lost? Their name their their name has been lost. But what is it now? Their name now is faultless. But it used to be lost. No, it used to what what it used to be is lost. Right. Cool. Great. Perfect. Um <laughs> And, uh, right, so what are we missing in here? What do you, what do you not have? You got fault? You... Yeah, I got Lost was split across, used to be a singular entity. Lost is split across the multiverse. No, no, no. And then Faultless. Faultless, Faultless is split across the multiverse. Faultless is destroyed and split across the multiverse. Okay. There Lost was, was renamed Faultless. Okay, okay, stop. Okay. Stop with the bit. There is a singular entity. Yeah. Its name no longer exists. Okay, great. That singular entity is no longer a singular entity, is now named Faultless and is taken as a scion of oblivion. Oh, that's why I know the name. That's what I thought. And then that scion of oblivion is now split across the multiverse, desingularized. Well, it was desingularized by the time it came Faultless. Oh. It, was, it, was, it formerly had a name and formerly was a singular entity. Desingularization it, preceded oblivion nation. Sure. <laughs> sure. Right? Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, are we missing anything else from that question? Uh, no. Any remnants of... Right, 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 right. So I just missing anything to catch Paul up on that. Um, so the, the answers are yes and no, in that yes, there would be some pre presumable remnants of Faultless, but no, it's not a thing we've seen or interacted with. So, yeah. Cool. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, this is not really a serious question at all. It's just having some fun. Sure. So... So, greetings, Sensibles fans. I'm, I'm Brian Lewolfund once again. I'm not used to talking to people like this, but... Who amongst your heroes and villains do you think would have the most fun at a convention like this, at, like Gen Con? Okay, okay, <laughs> all right. You, you, Guys, right? Do you understand the question? First off, heroes and villains. Do you know what heroes and villains are? Wait, wait, now you need to explain. Okay, uh, so <laughs> heroes are, are the good guys and villains are the bad guys, and there's, it's a completely black and white situation, and there's never any gray weirdness. Nice, okay. okay. Uh, and then a convention like this one. That one I know. Okay, Gen good, Con. great, great. Oh, good. Uh, uh, great, so what heroes slash villains would have a good time at this convention? Um, this question is interesting, but I think you all are going to be right about the answer to this question, which is to say, sure, guys, name out some other heroes and villains that would probably have a nice time. Guys, okay, but other ones? Baron Blade. Baron Blade, okay, I was wrong. Um, <laughs> you think that Baron Blade, yeah, Unity I like. You think Baron Blade would have a good time at this convention? Support your- Oh. Okay, so Baron Blade is going to be like, all right, all right. I'm going to come here specifically to be like this grognard about like, I've got all these miniatures and I've painted them exactly so. And look, they are exactly correct. And I uh, see what I love is this idea of that. This is that, well, the thing you said of he's going to come and dominate no miniatures war game thing is his plan. He's like, I know I've got it. I've made all my miniatures. Everything is right. And I'm going to come to destroy everyone. And then he shows up and he gets like real hubristic. And he does this really like over the top plan that ultimately leads to his downfall. And he ends in ruins. And he's like, I don't understand. I thought I had everything right. And the person that defeats him in the tournament is somebody who just signed up that day who'd never played before, but he was walking by <laughs> and they're like, Hey, we need one more person. And Pete risk is like, Oh sure. I'll play. It seems fun. <laughs> Do you know who Pete risk is? Setback? Yeah! Yes. 
Did you get that because you knew that was his name or from the context clues of the story? I vaguely remember that being his name, actually. Okay, okay cool. And then the context clues of the story like solidified it for me where Makes I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Who else would have a fun time at this convention? Parse. Parse, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rockstar, yeah, absolutely. Rockstar would enjoy it with the cosplay. Yeah, yeah. Haka, yes. Haka would have a great time. You'd walk around, everybody's having a good time. People be like, oh, great costume. He's like, oh, thank you. He's like, it's like, what do you mean costume? Whatever. Thank you. I hope you're having a nice time. Yeah, Haka. And no matter would... what, he'd be able to see over anyone. <laughs> right. Uh, crowds like, he'd be like, but he, the thing is, like, Haka could easily like, rah, 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 through crowds, but he wouldn't. He'd just like, oh, wait, it's fine. I got time. No big deal. <laughs> awesome. Great. Good answers. Um, do I think there's anybody else who are they like? Idealist, I think, would have fun. Um, what was that? Ray Manta, no, absolutely not, no way. All these sheeple, all these people with their smartphones, are you kidding? Come on, robots abound. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So interesting, I was thinking, who said Ambuscade? I didn't see that, yeah, great. So interesting, I was thinking about Ambuscade slash Stuntman, and I was thinking that I think he wouldn't be getting enough attention. I think he'd be like, all right, good. Here I am, I'm gonna show up, I'm wearing a cool outfit. It's like if I'm ambuscade, people will be like, oh, who's that super villain? There's other people wearing cool outfits and they're getting way more attention. Like, that, what is it? What is this? The guy's dressed up like a, as a bat or something and everybody's super excited about his costume. Look at me, I've got a metal arm. No, no, nah, he wouldn't get enough spotlight. I think he would be frustrated. I think that he would come to this convention expecting joy and end in frustration. It's an interesting theme that I'm coming to here, that the heroes would come here and have a good time, and that villains would come here expecting a good time that works for them, but would have a bad time. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Hmm. Yeah, proletariat would, would, is like, well, man, scheduling, no big deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got one more back here. What was, the, what was the first part? Antimox. Antimox. Oh, so Antimox sees all the people in cosplay and goes, great. <laughs> we can work with that. I love it. Excellent. There you go. Great. Thank you so much. That's a great question. All right. We got three more in-person questions and we'll do a game show. We'll be in good shape. Awesome. Fantastic. Hi, I'm Megan. Hello, Megan. I have a non-Sentinels related question. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> where, do, where do otters keep their money? Where do otters keep their money? Uh, in a riverbank? Damn it, how'd you know that? I didn't. I just had to think through. I was like, I was like, pouch, wallet, where do you keep money? Bank, bank, river, river bank. Got well, it. there you go. Yes. Okay, no, I have a question for you. Back to the microphone. Okay. Where does the general keep his armies? I don't know where. In his sleeveys. All right, so I saw a question that said, where does Napoleon keep his that? His armies? <laughs> yeah, and his sleeveys. Uh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, no problem, thank you. I just, I, I love that joke because the word armies is like, oh, armies. And then when you say sleeveys, it also like makes the word armies silly. <laughs> armies, <laughs> my armies. I'm Alex. Hello. Sometimes I write into the letters page as Azrael 2012 Pi. Yeah! What? Okay, great. Now we stop. <laughs> Why? Why? Uh, I made the screen name when I was 16, and I haven't that changed it That is a perfectly since. good answer. <laughs> Whomst amongst us. Yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, great. I was, I've always wondered, like, why this screen name? Like, okay, interesting. interesting. Perfect, perfect good. Um, so there's a clear distinction between the multiverse era and the RPG era, y to me. Yes. Um, you've published a lot of adventures for the RPG in the RPG era. Are there any plans to publish adventures or issues in the multiverse era, or at least outside of the RPG era? Um, so plans, yes, but plans with the, like, plans, yes, in terms of, like, yeah, at some point we'd like to do some, like, flashback adventures or some, like, um, disparation-type adventure things, doing the other things. At this point, nothing on the upcoming docket. We have so much we want to do in the RPG era that it's not time to yet start breaching those other areas. But yeah, we would like to eventually also uh, uh, explore those other spaces with RPG content. So, so yes, but not like, and next year we'll have a, no. <laughs> so uh, there you go. But that's a good question. Yeah. That's a good question. Thank you. Real quick, there's a clear delineation between the RPG era and the, multi the multiverse era. Um, 
Paul, what is that delineation? That it's the Oblivion event, right? Correct. Because the Oblivion event ends the multiverse because they're all locked off from each other, and it becomes a central kind of universe. This is can... great. How are they locked off from each other? Uh, because of... That's okay. I don't know. I didn't expect you to have that one. I was yeah, just like, yeah. oh, you're giving me more than I expected. Yeah, yeah. This is good. Uh, Grand Warlord Voss betray- Grand Warlord Voss yes. is taken as a scion of Oblivion, yes. and he works for Oblivion. And then Grand Ruler Voss uh, you takes, uh, betrays Oblivion, takes the power of Oblivion, and the first thing Grand Ruler Voss does upon getting Oblivion power is have cosmic awareness of other singular entities. And uh, uh, Grand Ruler Voss's plan was like, oh, now I'm going to be the biggest fish in the pond. Immediately sees bigger fish and goes, mm-mm, uses most of the Oblivion power to lock off the reality um, as, in its own little... Uh, and what is the proper canonical term for the thing that locks off the reality, universe one, from the rest of the multiverse. The sandwich bag. Everyone knows that it is a sandwich bag. <laughs> because the analogy given in the pages of the letters page was if you took an entire loaf of bread out of the sandwich bag, you took a single slice and you put it in a smaller sandwich bag, and then you put the loaf back in the sandwich bag. That is how Sentinel Comics universe works. So the bag that a loaf of bread is in is yes. a sandwich bag? Sure. Hmm. I didn't know, and I just hmm. read that. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Anyway, if you, put, if you take the loaf out of the bag, and you put the single piece of bread in a sandwich bag, that sandwich bag is what keeps yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, oh, no, that makes sense. Okay, okay, great. Cool, cool. Yeah, okay, okay. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, that was great. Last question. One last one from Nimbus. Um, Nimbus, yes. My mind just went blank, sorry. That's okay, there's applause. <laughs> you can wait. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. So Wager Master does the guys thing. Does Wellspring the guys thing. does the legacy thing. Yes. Do does Wager Master ever get like um, jealous of the thing that Wellspring did and is like, I want to make a legacy, so I'm going to make a legacy before they can do it. Mm. Are there mm. any like other like switches like, oh Wellspring's going to make guys this time. Oh, I'm going to oh, do. Okay, so like in another reality, are yeah. So is like. Is there a hypothetical reality in which the legacy stuff happened via Wager Master earlier, and then the guys stuff happened via like uh, Wellspring later? Like it's certainly possible. Um, I would probably swap the names at that point and just like do a, a further back sort of thing. Uh, it's possible to happen in some reality, and beyond the word possible, given the state of the nature of the multiverse, sure, yeah, that's happened probably a dozen times in other okay. realities. Do we ever visit that? I don't know. It's an interesting question. Um, that like an issue of disparation could tell a story of like, okay, let's take every hero's like massive cosmic singular origin story and swap them around a bit and, and, do, and be like, okay, what does the world look like if this is our, our first flagship hero and this is over here? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's possible. Um, I don't know that I have a specific one in mind, but like the existence of such realities, sure. Given the multiverse, sure. So it's not like a fixed point where she all, or Wellspring, I always picture her as a girl. I don't know. Ooh, but, interesting. Yeah. I, the presenting. thing that I find most interesting about the thing that you just said is your gendering of Wellspring, um, which is not is neither right nor wrong. Um, interesting. I had always felt more masculine vibes towards Wellspring, but that's just my own bias and not correct. And so it's interesting that you, you had like felt like a, more of a she thing. Again, not right or wrong, um, or rather both of us are wrong, um, which is fine. Uh, interesting, interesting. I'll, I need to think about Wellspring more. Um, okay, what was your actual question? I just got um, totally hung up by that. So it's not a fixed point where they always... Wager they always, always start the Parsons line. And guy they always that. do the guy's no, thing. No, most commonly we're going to see stories like that because the point of disparation stories from an editorial point of view is to be like, you recognize this world, uh, but... Um, so, so, like, you know, the extreme verse is like everybody's what you think, except like so. Um, uh, so no, it's, it's that's not the the that's not necessarily a fixed point, but more commonly than not, we'll see things not go that far, far afield. But sometimes they could. Cool. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right. Hey, Trevor. Oh, hey. How, How you, you doing? doing? Are you enjoying this music? You know, <clears throat> I had other music <laughs> in mind, but... Uh, did you have other music in mind? I did. Would it, you like to tell me about that other music? Oh, yeah, sure. Are we, uh, well, I had something prepared if we were going to do some sort of... I know sometimes we do, uh, like, 
letters that have a theme, like a game show style theme. Do you want me to read a letter like that? Oh, yeah, sure. Should I? uh, Do you want me to start or do you want you to start? Let's just get it going. Welcome to Timeline Trouble. Let me back up. I definitely did this wrong, and I think it's funnier this way, but Trevor, you do whatever you want to with it, because what I should have done to intro this, uh-huh. what I should have done yeah. was read the letter, Yes. because Demon Cat did a great job. Oh, let's just do it. Let's just pretend like that whole thing just... You want to start over? Yeah. Because I was, I was like, oh, I'll do a bit, and then I'll start reading the letter, and then as, as this music was playing, I'm like, oh, yeah, I goofed it. Okay. Would, uh, here, how about this? Well, you look over at me, and you give me like a, <laughs> some sort of sign. Oh, I, I, I don't even need to. Demon Cat did it. Oh, Demon Cat did it. It's okay. really good. That's great. All right, let's do it this way. We just finished that thing. I've got another letter here to read that I prepared in advance that I definitely read in advance and would not have any trouble with this. <clears throat> this letter's from Demon Cat, who writes, Hello, gentlemen, it is I, Demon Cat, writing to you today about a game show. Cue the music, Trevor. <laughs> Now I have to pause again. Trevor, where'd that music come from? Uh, me. Did you write that music? Yeah, I wrote that for this. Did you take the Sentinels theme song yes. and like rework it into a sound Correct. that sounded like a game show? Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> it, it, <that's>, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Timeline Trouble. <laughs> In this game show, our lucky contestant, Paul, will be given a series of events in the history of Sentinel Comics, as read by Christopher, and must guess which one came first in the publishing timeline. If you win, nothing happens! (laughs) If you lose, nothing happens! There is absolutely no stakes at all to this game show, but who cares? Our theme for the day is Heroes! (laughs) <laughs> it's not the soundtrack I expected. <clears throat> Night Mist! Everybody look at Night Mist! Everyone in the whole room look at Night Mist! Wow! Wow! Yeah, that's right, theme song! Night Mist was not able to join us for the costume contest, but it was too bad because Night Mist had to go to another panel, but now we have Night Mist here and it's great! Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you can hang out if you want, you don't... Okay, okay. <laughs> I think I embarrassed her. Anyway, uh, question one. The Prime Wardens are a team of very powerful individuals, but one of these four members... Nope. But of these four members, who was the first to appear in the pages of Sentinel Comics? Was it Anthony Drake, known as the Argent Adept, Helena, known as Fanatic, Hugh Lousley, known as Captain Cosmic, or Mick Dalton, known as Tempest. Mick Dalton, known as Tempest. Final answer? Yes? You're right! (laughs) Mick Dalton, the hero known as Tempest, first showed up in 1965, along with three other heroes, with with the other three heroes here mentioning appearing in the 70s. Ooh. So Mick Dalton by a notable... Good job, good job. One and oh right now. Paul, how are you feeling? I'm feeling awesome. You did a sidebar thing. How are you feeling so far, Paul? Yeah, yeah. You're you're one question in, you're at 100%. I am. You want to risk it? You want to take your money or you want to keep going? I'm going to keep going. You're going to keep going? I'm going to risk all the money I've made on this Risk all of that money. That's that's brave. That's brave. Uh, You know what? Yeah. I'm going to give you, since I've now transitioned this into a game show of this sort, I'm going to give you one audience participation oh, nice. point. At some point, you can nice. pull the audience to get help with a question if you feel stuck. Nice. One. You get one for the entire game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. Okay, great. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, okay. we're going to come back into it. Yeah, yeah. You feeling good? Yeah. Okay, feeling, here we go. Awesome. All right, time for question two. When Sentinel Comics was starting out in the Golden Age, we saw the debut of many characters who would go on to be some of the most iconic heroes of the brand. But of these four, who was the one to make the first appearance? Which of these four first appeared chronologically in Sentinel Comics? Was it A, John Rhodes, known as The Scholar, B, Paul Parsons the Eighth, known as Legacy, America's Finest? Was it Maya Montgomery, known as The Wraith, or Ata Wakawera, known as Haka? 
Ooh. Okay. Scholar, Legacy, America's Finest, The Wraith, or Haka? I'm going to go with The Wraith. You're going to go with The Wraith? Maya Montgomery is The Wraith. Uh, final answer? Yeah. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. <sighs> okay. John Rhodes, the scholar. Ah. He first appears in September of 1946, one month oh. before Paul Parsons the Eighth, okay. and two years before the other three heroes debut in October of 1948. All right, all right, all right, cool. all right, all right. We're one and one. Yeah, yeah. But even though we said we're risking all the money, that doesn't end the game. We just right. we just keep going. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna risk it all again. You risk it all again. That's good. 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 All right. Question three. While travel between dimensions isn't something every hero does, there are exceptions to the rule. Of these four heroes, who was the first to cross the multiverse? Ooh, okay. Was it A, Maria Elena de Falcon, also known as La Capitan or La Comodora? B, Vanessa Long, known as the Visionary? C, Paige Huntley, known as Knife? Or D, Omnitron X, known as Omnitron X? I think I'm going to pull the audience. Oh! A poll for the question. audience. I, mean, I see some confused faces. Okay, so what we're going to do, it, uh, how do we do it? By show of hands? Yeah, just perhaps? show of hands. Show just of hands. Read each one down. Yeah, here we go. Show of hands to the audience. Uh, who was the first to cross the multiverse in the pages of Sentinel Comics? So chronologically in the comics, not in the m story. You know what I mean? In the metaverse, who was the first to cross the multiverse? Was it A, Maria Elena de Falcon, known as La Capitan? Got a couple of hands here. Okay, okay. Was it B, Vanessa Long, known as the Visionary? Oh, oh, mm. oh. Oh, a bunch of hands here. Was it C, Paige Huntley, known as Knife? No hands, that's correct. <laughs> um, or was it D, Omnitron X, known as Omnitron X? Oh, three, four hands here on this one. Five hands, okay, okay. Oh, boy. Okay, all right. Okay, so how do you feel about that? You, so I would, I would say that we got a little bit from Maria, Maria, Maria Lane. Right, right. We got a, a medium amount for Omnitron X, right. a high amount for Visionary, and a no amount for Vanessa Long. How do you feel about that? Is it, you feel like Visionary is the right answer? So I was feeling like Visionary is the right answer to going in, and a lot of oh. people here felt like it was. Okay. But then, like, a core chunk of people voted for Omnitron X. And I'm very curious. Mm, mm, dilemmas, you know what I mean? Dilemmas. You know what I mean? I'd hate to be in your shoes. You're risking it all here. I am risking it if all If you yet. answer this question incorrectly, we'll have to go on to the next question. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm just going to say I'm going to try next. That is correct. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> Omnitron X first appears during the Singularity event in 1976, where he promptly sacrifices himself to defeat the original Omnitron. He gets better eventually. Vanessa Long does not show up until the mid '80s. All right. All right. Nice. All right. Oh, that was good. Good. Yeah, yeah, good yeah. reading the, the situation. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Question four. Many heroes rely on technology, whether they make it on their own or they get it from someone else. Of these four heroes, who made their debut as a character first? All right. So this is, again, another first appearance, yeah, but yeah. these are technology heroes. Was it A, Deborah Caspit, the hero known as Unity? Was it B, Ansel G. Moreau, Ambuscade slash Stuntman? Right. Was it uh, C, Randall Butler, Benchmark? Or was it D, Eugene Wilkinson, Rive? So that was Unity. Right. Ambuscade. I Benchmark, believe Rive. it was Rive. Ooh. That's going to be D, mine. Rive, final answer? Yeah, final answer. Oh, boy, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, the answer is Ansel G. Moreau, actually. Ambuscade. Ah, okay, yeah, that was my second guess. Yeah, the world-famous movie star first appeared as Ambuscade in 1988. Okay. That said, I would have accepted a tricky answer of Unity was the first of four to appear as a hero in 1990, but the thing the Demon Cat didn't write here, Unity appear first appeared in 1990 in the comics. Unity appeared a few years earlier in the animated television show. Oh. So if you'd give me Unity, I'd be like, I'll give you. I'll make Trevor make up a new sound. He'll have to just like call it something. But he didn't do it, so you don't have to make his new sound. You're good. Um, but um, but yeah. So the, but then the rest were in the 20 teens. Um, so that yeah, makes sense. yeah. Both, I knew both Rise and Benchmark are quite okay. late. I yeah. knew that Benchmark was really late. But. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so Ansel G. Moreau yeah. by a couple of years before Unity. 
Um, yeah, there you go. I was feeling like maybe Rides was one of those like guys from the 70s and they like brought uh, back. Reboot, you know what I mean? mean? Like, yeah. Had super, that kind of vibe. Super legit. Super yeah, yeah, legit. Yeah. Very well could have been. Was yeah. not, but could have been. Right. I, I like that as a, as a yeah. Dark Horse answer. All right. Last question. Here we are. Question five. While most characters associated with Rook City debuted in the gritty era of comics, there are exceptions to this. Of these four, who was the first character to, to debut in the pages of Sentinel Comics? Ooh, okay. All right. Was it A, Amanda Cohen, the hero known as Expatriate? Okay. B, Pete Risk, the hero known as Setback? C, Harry Slim Walker, the hero known as Black Fist slash Mr. Fixer? Or Lillian Corbis, the hero known as the Harpy, formerly known as the villain, the Matriarch? Uh, I think it was here. the Matriarch slash Harpy. Would you like to pull the audience? Yeah. All right, audience. Was it A, Expatriate, B, Setback, C, Blackfist slash Mr. Fixer? Oh, 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 some hands. Or D, Matriarch slash Harpy? Oh, 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 some hands. And Mr. Chubbs. All right. I don't think that really helped you anymore. No, I'm going with Matrix slash You're Harpy. going with Matrix yeah, slash yeah. Harpy? Okay, all right. The answer... Unfortunately, we are incorrect. It was Harry Slim Walker. Okay. Yeah, yeah. While Th the those are my two. See, the same things that everyone thought here, that those are the two most likely. I thought that as well. While the iconic version yep. of Blackfist as a black exploitation kung fu dude first appeared in 1972, right. several years after the Matriarch's first appearance, the first time Slim took up the mantle of Blackfist was as a boxer in 1951. Ah. Seven years before Lillian's outing as the Matriarch. Nice. Nice. So. Yeah. How'd you do? I hope you enjoyed this game show, and I'll see you next time if ratings allow it for another round of Timeline Trouble. <laughs> Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Paul, you've won the game. You won the game, Paul. Amazing. Thank Amazing. you. Uh, uh, major props, by the way, to Demon Cat. That is one of the best game show write-ups I have ever gotten. That was fantastic. Yeah, that good was job, really Demon good. Cat. Hey, that was delightful. Thank you for all your help, audience. Yeah, that was, was great. great. We've got about a half an hour left. Would other people like to ask game show questions? The thing that I threatened on the letters page was that I would do live game show things where if people felt like they had trivia questions, they wanted to try to do game show things, they could ask them and force you slash us, depending on the question, to answer them. But I don't want to put anybody in the spot if they don't have things. No, nobody's jumping. Nobody's jumping. That's great. Oh, uh oh. No. Come on down. Secret guest question asker Cody. Oh, no. Uh, hi. Hello. Would you like to introduce Thank yourself, you. secret uh, question asker guest? My name's Cody? Cody, as he said. Uh, if you're on the Discord, you know me as Arn and Off. Um, Arn and Off? My yep. my. Which is dumb pun, but I love it. It's my screen name everywhere. Uh, so I actually was thinking about a question to ask for the first section, sure, uh, sure. the first game show where it was, you know, trying to figure out if Paul do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I came up with one that I find particularly evil because I might be the only person who knows it kind of all the way. So <laughs> I'll ask it. Uh, so um, I'm going to pause you right there. Yeah. This I'm not is spoiling anything. It is on the podcast. This is Cody. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I trust you. Yeah. Th this is Cody, who uh, worked on... Uh, he's part of Loreforge game, who worked on the Prime War game. Cody knows more lore that I wouldn't want him to spoil than most anybody <laughs> who knows things. Like, the people who could spoil things for Sentinel Comics goes me, Adam... You're probably about tied with Chris Burton. You and Chris oh, Burton. Oh wow! You and Chris okay. Burton have different overlaps of knowledge that I wouldn't want somebody to say publicly. But you've got a. Anyway, anyway. Okay, that's interesting. So that's, I'm that's not nervous at all about what you're gonna say. <laughs> oh no, no, not at all. Uh, I mean, I figure even before I ask the question, you know, kind of what it's about. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm just gonna say it. Uh, so uh, is Paige Huntley uh, knife uh, in the Miss Storm Timeline, part of the superhero organization, well, not superhero, uh, pro-hero organization, Glass, as a member of PRISM. <laughs> okay. I know who Paige Huntley is, slash Knife. And it is Knife specifically. Yes, as Knife, right. I, yeah, I know that. And I know that there's the Miss Storm situation that makes... There's something to do with 
magic. Mm. Something to do with Night Mist? Yeah, that's where the Miststorm comes from. Right. And it creates alternate bad universes somehow? No. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, um, who, other than Cody, would like to explain the Miststorm or attempt to do so? The Miststorm... <laughs> no. yeah, 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 come on up, come on up. Give it a shot. Or I'll make Night Mist out there, come do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that would just be cruel. Oh, that, is evil. Hey. that would be evil. Hey, Night Mist. <laughs> Do you feel like you could explain the mist storm? Hold on. Okay, great, 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 great. That's, to be fair, that's beyond your time. That's Me so, neither. Like, like, too soon, I get it, but no, that's fine. All right, all right, give it a shot. <laughs> so, in universe. Yes. Big bad destruction of Rook City happens almost simultaneously with the death, death of Chrono Ranger. Setback comes around and says, "Hey, what is this button that's flashing on his badge? Do yeah, yeah. presses it, yeah. resets time. Correct. Unbeknownst to Setback, creates a time dilation at or that a point. diversion. Yeah, a split in time. Yeah. Oh, okay. So." In universe, it is a split in time where in the metaverse, the single slice of bread, if you will, <laughs> Rook City was not destroyed. But in the Mist Storm universe, Rook City was destroyed. That's true. And then in the creative side, it's let's get all these old names from the 90s and let them go Supreme Edgelord. Yeah. Or as I like to call it, Pizza Cutter, because all edge, no point. <laughs> and let's let them go on their own creative take on what happened after the Oblivion event. Yes. So this is the Vertex timeline, which you have heard right. of? Which is the Prime War Sentinel Tactics-esque, that stuff. Yes. Right, okay. Cool, Great. Cool, 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 and cool, cool. in the Vertex timeline reality there is a thing called the mist storm, which is slowly consuming everything. And it is the remnants of Night Mist's power uh, gone wild. So it has to do with magic, but not in a, in, a, in a roundabout way. Yeah. All right. So you're there. Okay. Take Thank it. you. Excellent. Good job. All right, Cody. How, What's the rest of the question? How far are we along here? So we've got the Mist Storm timeline, we've got Vertex, right. we've got so Paige Huntley. Is the hero Knife? Knife. Yeah. In the Mist Storm timeline, part of the pro hero organization Glasses. Gla glass. Glass, yeah. Yeah. yes. Uh, team Prism. So. Glass and Prism. Don't know about those at all. Not, not about those nope. at all. Okay. And beyond that, there's nobody in this room other than the two of us that could talk about Glass or Prism, is my guess. Uh, you have talked about both glass and prism on the podcast. Oh, Ooh. shoot. Fantastic. Great. <laughs> Great. So I saw a hand. I saw a couple of hands. It, it, yeah, yeah. I, this seemed confident. Yeah, this is good. Remind me your name. I'm terrible. Okay. This, I'm Brett. Brett. Okay. And I believe that I listened to the episode where this came up because I am working my way from the beginning when I take road trips for work. Sure. Nice. Great. So... So, in the Mist Storm timeline, mm -hmm. there is an organization where Glass has like 18, it's an acronym, prison is an acronym, and this organization is kind of good guys, but they're kind of vigilante hunters, I think? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, dealing with problems, yeah, yeah. And I do know that somebody was a part of that. I do believe that I know the answer to this. Okay, Ooh. okay. That yeah. knife was part of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, let, let's keep that on deck for just a second, but hang out here. Question Do you know what the acronym GLASS stands for? God, no. Okay. <laughs> Do you? No. Okay. Because you seem like, uh, 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 this. So, well, who's that? Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. There's more prism. Anybody can do GLASS? Cody, you want to do GLASS? I know one of the, there's two. Yes, that's true, I there are two. the first one. Go ahead. But the actual one, because No, 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 a, hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, hang out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, you, I still have need of you. Cody, I want you to answer this question, but we're going to hang out with this microphone here, because, yeah, yeah. So, oh. Cody, yeah, you're uh, getting get, us The one that I know is Gorilla Liberation and System subser Subversion. Yes, yes, excellent. Okay, great. Gorilla Liberation and System Subvergence? 
Subversion. subversion. Yeah. And systems subversion. Right, right. Cool, which cool, is, cool. Which is, and, th and that's like the secret back end, Brandon, yeah. because that's not the front end, hey, we're doing good guy stuff one. Which is like general liaison. Yes. ASS. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, and then Prism is the one that was the name of the heroes. No, that's good. It's good. Nice. Yeah, part, parts collecting oblivion shards and using them as as ammunition is absolutely part of that. Um, was she on Team Prism? She, she was on Glass. She was on Prism. She so yeah, parts was part of Glass, but not part of Team Prism. So you're you're right about the Glass thing and parts being there and that being part of her story. But she wasn't a member of the Prism team. Can you tell us the members of the Prism team, or can you tell us the members of the Prism team? No. Okay. Great. <laughs> I could, but it does spoil the answer. Oh, so yeah. Oh, that's oh, that's fair. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. So the question for you. Right. So like, I feel like yes, is, knife is on the team. That's my feeling. Interesting. Uh, Cody, do vibes. you think that uh, is it? Yes or no? No, knife isn't on the team. Okay, okay but hold on. So now, now answer the question again. But instead of saying knife, say her other name. Oh, okay. I feel like I forget her other name. Oh yeah, Paige Huntley. Paige Huntley is on the team? Paige Huntley is on the team. Oh, oh. interesting, interesting. <laughs> uh, you want to run us down the, the names of the members of PRISM? You got them still? Ah, uh, gosh. Uh, yeah. Paige, Rebecca, Isaac? I Solomon, so. Malcolm? Y yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Pretty, pr yeah, pretty sure. And then it turns into when she takes on the name PRISM, it's personnel recovery infiltration and two S's that I can't remember, <laughs> <laughs> and S and M. Yeah, right, yeah, awesome. Okay, good, so that was nice. some deep cut There was just stuff. a lot of words and things. I'm like, no, this is a fun question. Yeah, great. yeah, that's, a, that's great. <laughs> is there anything you have to add? It's all right if you don't, but if you do, I'm interested. I just remember it was super edgelordy. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was, it was. Thank you, thank you, Cody. <laughs> And with that, I think we're going to wrap things up. This has been great. Thank you all for coming and part of, being part of this. I had a vague plan, and parts of it worked even better than I could have expected. This was the exact right set of people to make this happen. So thank you all so much. Um, Paul, do you have any, any final words? Oh, first outro things. Uh, do you want to do a cover? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what do you want to draw for the, co the comic book cover for this issue? Uh, let's see. I'm just going to... Yep. Draw. Mm -hmm. I think I can draw some. One of those S's. Oh. You draw the three lines. Yeah. And the other three lines. And you make it pointy in the top and the bottom. Great. Great. Cool. Those that, are really impressive. I think you do that. I think you do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everybody for listening. We could not do this without you. Thanks especially to our Patreon supporters. Uh, if you want to join the Patreon, go to the letters page. Uh, go to patreon.com slash letters page. If you want to find out more information about the podcast, go to greaterthegames.com slash the letters page. Um, uh, next week, we're going to have an uh, editor's note about <laughs> uh, where we finish up the creative process we did before, but with community engagement. So if you join the Patreon, you'll be part of that. Uh, thanks, everybody. And... Uh, Keep on saving the multiverse. Page is a weekly podcast featuring fiction from the world of Sentinel Comics, written by me, Christopher Bedell, and illustrated by me, Adam Rebataro. We are also your hosts. The music that you hear was composed by me, Jean-Marc Giffen, and is used courtesy of Handelabra Games. The song, Christopher and Adam Reading Letters to You, was written and performed by Christopher's brother, Anthony Bedell. The show is edited and produced by me, Trevor Casterline. Thanks for listening and supporting the multiverse. <laughs> Christopher and Adam reading letters to you Christopher and Adam Christopher and Adam reading letters from you Let them read a match Let
Here's to you, Christopher and Adam. Christopher and Adam. Who is here first year, 2017? 2017, 2017, yeah, yes, people. My brother, who sings the theme song, who wrote the theme song, uh, came out and played guitar and played on the thing. And he, uh, my brother is a professional musician. He's a phenomenal musician. And uh, he's known, Adam and I have been friends since um, we were 10 and 11. And uh, so my, my younger brother is used to his older brother and his dumb friend doing dumb stuff. And he, one of my brother's cornerstones of his life is making fun of his older brother and his dumb friend. And uh, so years ago, when I had mentioned to him, we were talking once, and I was like, oh, yeah, so Adam and I are going to start a podcast for the games that we make. And he's like, oh, man, I'd write a theme song for that podcast. And I was like, oh, would you? Like, you're a phenomenal musician. And he's like, yeah, man, sure thing. And then he, like, 20 minutes later, is like, here you go. He just made it up off the cuff, and he recorded it, and he sent it to us, and he was doing it, like, Definitely to make fun of us. <laughs> he knew nothing about the episode, the podcast, except that other was, it was called the Letters Page, and that it was Christopher and Adam. So like Christopher and Adam, Letters, got, let's do this. And so he did that, threw it off here, and he's like, ha ha, got him. And I'm like, I love this. <laughs> I love this like soft rock ballad. Like great. And so I, we made it part of the podcast. And so then that first time that Anthony came out. Because the first, our first Gen, uh, Gen Con Live, Anthony came out and he sat there and he played guitar and he did some like musical stings between bits and everything. It was great. But he came out and he's like, "Okay, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll like, I'll, I'll uh, put, yeah, I'll do, I'll put up with you. I'll, I'm willing to do that." Um, and then there, there was a big crowd and everybody was really excited. And he's like, "Oh gosh!" And then he started playing the song and he didn't remember the song because he'd written it years ago. <laughs> and written it is a strong word for what he did. He just like played some chords and sang some bars and like made some noises and that's it. So he did, he's like, he listened to it on the way here. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, 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 I can do that. So he starts strumming it and everybody starts singing and he's like. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody does the Christopher and Adam wow part at the end. And he's like. <laughs> so anyway, that is the most popular song that my brother's ever written. <laughs> In terms of the number of people who've heard it and know all the words to it and everything, that song is his most popular hit, which is in some way frustrating to him. So I get to win in the long run. I get the theme song, and the thing he does to troll me, just good for me.